Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, the word of God, the word, the word, the word of God. Sharper and powerful than a two-edged sword. He is called the word of God. Jesus is. He is. He has a name written on him. The word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. John chapter one. The word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Talking about Jesus. This is the word of God. Powerful. Able to discern between marrow and joints and soul and spirit. The word of God infallible it is immutable the word of God inspired by the breath of God the ruach the spirit of God himself this is our Bible this is what we call the word of God our Bible and so often we let it just sit on a shelf we let it just gather dust or we don't know it we don't study it we don't read it oh saints of god do we not re really know how powerful his word is i have a message today about the word it's called phylactery factory phylactery p h y L-A-C-T-O-R-Y, phylactery, factory. This is a word that God had given me that he has renewed excitement inside of me over this word. He has shown me different things than, than I had seen before. And I just, want, I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you in this message today. So get a pad, get a pen, open your scriptures with me. If you don't have it, I'll open them for you. This is such a tender message from the Father. I mean that. It is a tender, sweet message from your Father, the one who sent the word. He said he sent the word to heal your diseases. This is our Bible. I want to read you a verse. It's out of Exodus, way back, Exodus chapter 13, verse 16. It shall be a sign on your hand and as frontals between your eyes, for by strength of hand the Lord brought us out of bondage. Now, it says Egypt. But really, this word is for us that whatever he's talking about, I'm going, to talk, I'm going to share that with you. But what the it is, it shall be a sign on your hand, and it shall be a sign of, on your frontals between your eyes. For by strength, the hand of the Lord brought us out of bondage. So what is the it? A phylactery. Does it help? <laughs> so here's what a phylactery is. God commanded Israel to bind the word to themselves in something called a phylactery. It was, they were leather squares. They were like leather boxes that contained strip, uh, strips of scripture. And normally there were four specific scriptures in these phylacteries that they were to bind. The word bind means to sew together, to become one with. And so God said, I, I, I'm, I'm telling the, Israels, uh, uh, the Israelites, I'm telling Israel to take the word of God on parchment, Write it and bind it to your head or bind it to your hand because I have brought you out of bondage. How, God? Through the word. So th these leather square boxes, they were just like black leather squares, not big, small boxes that were to be put on their hands and they were worn on their elbow. We're going to talk about where they were worn. But here are the scriptures that were written in the phylacteries. Deuteronomy 6, which is the Lord our God is one. O-N-E. Our Lord, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. It tells them in that same verse to love the Lord with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your heart. And that was one scripture to remind them. Wear that, wear that. To remember who your God is. And then another one was Deuteronomy. 
Deuteronomy chapter 11, and it says, if you obey my commandments, and then lists the blessings that come, the promises that come in the obedience to his commandments. And then it has Exodus 13, which talks about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Well, we know that the Feast of Unleavened Bread was a representation of Jesus, right? And then Exodus 13, from verses 11, the um, 11 bread is verses 1 to 10. And then the fourth portion of Scripture that they would apply to their bodies was Exodus 13, verses 11 through 16. And it was a very brief retelling of Moses and Israel and their deliverance from Egypt. And they were to be placed with leather bands tied around them on their hands and on their foreheads between the eyebrows and on the left arm close to the elbow. Now, we are people of the word. If you, if you are a believer in Jesus, who is the word, then we are people of the word. Uh, there is nothing more exciting to me than the Word of God. And, and I don't mean that because I'm a teacher. It has always thrilled me. His Word has empowered me. It has broken me. It has restored me. And I've always been in love with His Word. Passionately, passionately in love with the Word of God. I would take time to underline and write in my Bible and highlight and draw lines connecting verses and thoughts together. I spent an entire summer uh, tracking in the Old Testament if they marched from here to here how long that was. If it said that David encamped over here and the Philistines were over here, I wanted to know how far that was. I, I, I wanted to know everything I could about his word. I love his word. But I didn't always use his word. I didn't always know how to apply it to my life. And when I read this, that I needed to apply this to different parts of my body, God sparked something in me, and he showed me this amazing study. The Word is the very breath of God. It's the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God. It's given to us, for us. But do we have it bound around us in our lives? Is it really an everyday, every moment part of our lives? Well, let me show you how completely immersed we are supposed to be in the Word. Can I just show you how every aspect of our life is to be covered by the Word? This, this will spin your head. This will light you up inside. This is like the, a, a whole bunch of frosting on top of the cake itself. This is powerful. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. You shall bind them, here it is again, the phylacteries, the word. You shall bind the word as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals between your eyes. We are to bind the word on our hands. What do we use our hands for? To work. To work. If I apply the word to my work, if, if I apply the word to my hands, the physical labor of my hands, whatever I'm doing, if, if I'm raking and leaves in my yard or I'm studying at the computer, if you're a, a doctor, a teacher, whatever you are, God said, apply the word to your hands for work. How do I apply the word to my hands? I say things like this. I will do my all unto Christ as a, a, for, a, for, my, for my work as I'm doing unto Christ. That's what the Bible says, to do everything as unto Jesus. Or that I want to be a, a, a good worker. I want to be excellent at my job. I don't want just mediocrity, because God is a God of excellence. And so my God shall supply everything I need. He told Moses in, in Exodus that there were two men, Bezalel and Eliahim, that he was going to put skill into their hands so that they could accomplish all of the furnishings of the tabernacle. We need the word on our hands. Can you imagine trying to do something this word 
in this world without God helping you, without the word to guide you, we need the word on our hands. But then it says to bind them to your foreheads. We need the word as we think, as we think. We wear a helmet of salvation. Ephesians 6, wear a helmet of salvation. But St. Corinthians says that we are to bind our thoughts, take them captive under the obedience of Jesus Christ, casting down imaginations and lies that exalt themselves against the true knowledge of God. We are to, to take those thoughts captive. How do I do that? I bind his word to my thinking. I don't think outside of his word. I think within his word. If it's not in his word, I won't think it. Isn't that a great, I mean, it's an easy rule. If it's not in his word, we don't think it. Well, the doctor says you have cancer. I can think, oh God, WebMD is one of the, the most it's the hardest thing to come against, not because it's lies, but because it's the world's truth. When you, you get a diagnosis and the first thing you do is jump online and look it up and see all the negative things and all the horrible things about that diagnosis. Why don't you jump in the Bible first and look up scriptures of healing where God promised healing? I'll heal your diseases. I sent my word to heal your diseases. He said it to the, to the Israelites, I'll not even put the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians. James says if, if, you, if the elders would come together and lay hands, that person will recover. This is what God is looking for when we come to thinking. That we need to think what his word says, not think what's, what the world says. And so God wants us to apply his word when we work. He wants us to apply the word when we think. But then here's the scripture. This is Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. Deuteronomy 11, verse 18. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine, listen, on your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals or frontlets between your eyes. See, now God says, not only to put them on your hands, when you work, not only on your minds, when you're thinking, think the thoughts. We are renewed by the thoughts in our mind. Isn't that what the scripture says? Do not be conformed this word, to this world, but be renewed and transformed by your mind, by changing your mind. God said, don't just put them on your hands. Don't just think of my word when you are thinking, but now apply them to your heart and your soul. Your heart. It's a place you love from. You can truly love when the word is in your heart. It softens your heart when his word is alive and active in your heart. I have seen bitter, hard-hearted Christians. Uh, it's even hard to call them Christians because their heart has become so hard because there's no word inside of them. God said to, to bind them on your hearts. When you love with God's word, when it says things like love your enemies, forgive those who despitefully use you, love those who curse you, forgive them seven times, 70 times, love your neighbor as yourself. When you are governed by the word in the way that you love, you love better, you love stronger, you love more powerfully and more godly. When you have God's word in your heart, you won't love ugly. You will love beautifully. When you bind his word in your heart and let that word govern how you love, you love godly, not worldly. And so God says to bind them on your heart. But not just on your hands when you work. Not just on your mind when you're thinking through the day. And not just on your heart when you love, but in your soul. Now your soul is the place of all your emotions. The way that you react in situations, 
All of those passions and desires are in your soul. And God said, therefore, you shall lay these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. He wants his words so deeply penetrating us that my emotions aren't governed by thoughts of this world, by situations and circumstances that come my way that want to blow me off the solid rock of Jesus Christ. God wants my emotions governed by his word. So I don't fly off the handle in anger. So I don't begin to fear and doubt. So that I don't have these emotions of, of questioning in a, in a doubtful way. God wants our emotions governed by his word. Governed by what his word says to us. I, can, I do not want to be emotionally driven. God said that he sent Jesus to be a divider of men. That he came, Jesus said himself, I came as a sword to divide. And Hebrews says that, he, that, the, that there's the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword that divides a soul from spirit. You see, I want to be spirit-driven. I don't want to be emotionally driven. That all my emotions are what guides me through a decision or guides me through life. I want my spirit man, that part that is full of God, to guide what I do and guide what I say and God ha guide how I live my life. And I can only do that if I apply that word to my soul. But then look at this. Not just to our hands when we work do we need the word. Not just to our minds when we think do we need his word. Not just to our hearts when we love do I need his word. And not just to my soul and my emotions need I apply his word. But now look at Exodus chapter 13 verse 9. Exodus 13 9. It shall be as a sign to you on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the Lord's law may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. I need God's word in me when I speak. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so often I, I would speak death out of my tongue. What do you mean, death? I'd wake up in the morning and go, oh, this is going to be a long day. What did I just do? I just prophesied over my day. I just spoke like a death over my day. Or I was with somebody who was sick, and you come home and you go, oh, I'm going to be sick now. I'm going to get that flu. You just spoke that thing out. You again prophesied over your life. I need his word when I'm facing a long, hard day to get up and, and say, my God shall supply all of my needs, that he is my strength and my power and my might, that he is, he is the one who helps me persevere. This is his word, and it's alive and active inside of us. The word became flesh, John 1, and dwelt among us. That word became flesh. It came to life inside of me. And we need that word to counter all of the lies that the world throws at us. Even the lies that we speak ourselves. Oh, I don't know if my daughter will ever be saved. Oh, I don't know if my husband or my wife this. Oh, I'm never going to get a raise. Oh, I'm not going to do this. Or I'm never going to get healed. That's not what his word says. God says, I came to restore. Jeremiah says, he said, Jeremiah has told us that God came to restore health. To restore health. We should be claiming that, that God came to restore health, to restore salvation. That's what David prayed, to restore the joy of my salvation in Psalm 51. God wants us to speak his word. Our conversation should be completely not, you know, super spiritual and, you know, thou lost this, doth do that. That's not it. But the word of God should be in your mouth. I love Joyce Meyer. One day she said, I'm not always in his word every day, but his word is in me every day. That, that's a powerful statement. His word is in me every day. But not only does God want us to inject his word into our work time and apply the word to our thoughts, 
He doesn't just want us to love with his word in our hearts and to be driven by his word in our souls. Not just, not, not only does he want us to speak the truth of his word, but look at this one. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. You shall teach them dil diligently to your children and talk of them when you sit in your house and walk by the way, when you lie down and when you shall rise. Look at verse 9 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6, verse 9. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house. God said, now the word needs to be applied to your family, to everything inside of your home, the way you govern your home, the way you, you handle finances, the way you raise your children, the way that you take care of your, your spouse, the way that you labor and you're a witness to your neighbors, all of that. God says, you need my word to be successful and victorious in that. You shall write them. What? Teach the word to your children diligently. Talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you sit up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. You see, the world needs to see this life-changing power of the word. But Jesus warns us warns us though not to be ultra pious in the word not like the pharisees who used phylacteries to be noticed by men you see they would wear these phylacteries they would flaunt their pious word knowledge among the peoples see god doesn't want us to flaunt the word he wants us to let the word become part of us dwell with us that we become a walking word for others to see here's the admonition this is matthew chapter 23 verse 5 matthew 23 verse 5 but all their works they do to be seen by men they make their phylacteries broad and enlarged the borders of their garments. That's like taking a Bible and putting it on your forehead and walking around with a Bible on your forehead, tying your Bible to your head so that people notice how word-guided and word-oriented you are. But that's not what God talks about. He said, don't do that. Put the word in you that it might come out of you because people need the word. But don't, don't be quoting scripture and piously walking around all peacock feathers out saying, boy, look at me. My life is governed by the word. Oh, God wants us to be humble, so humble that we understand that we need desperately his word of God inside of us, that we have no victory without his word. When we work, when we think, when we love, when we guide when we, in our emotions, when we speak, and with our family and in our house. Our mission is to show the world Jesus, not to show them up in the world. Isaiah tells us the true purpose of the word. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Gosh, I just feel the Holy Spirit all over this. I'm fired up on the inside. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. The sovereign Lord, God himself, has given me and you an instructed tongue to know the word. What word? The word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, waking my ear to listen as one being taught. Teach me thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Isaiah said, that word sustains the weary. Are you weary? Are there weary people around you? Is this world weary from the stain and sin and pain of the enemy? Yes, Weary of the battle, yes. Well, how do we combat that? The sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word to sustain the weary. He awakens me morning after morning after morning. And my ears are awakened to listen to him like one who's being taught. 
teach me thy word, God, that I might apply it to every area of my life, to work, to thinking, to love, to my emotions, to speaking, to my family, to a lost and dying world that needs the living, active word of God. This is the noblest of all cause, calls, is to be a phylactery, factory, right? To be a walking word, a factory of his word. I don't need to bind them on my head anymore. I just need to hide them in my heart. That's what God said. Put them in your heart, and I will draw them out when you need them. Memorize his word. Put in your heart that you might not sin against God. His word, his word, his word was sent to you and sent to me. I don't need to wear the word because the word lives inside of me. Jesus Christ, the word of God, the son of God dwells inside of me in his fullness through the Holy Spirit. Oh, saints, become a phylactery factory for yourself, for your family, for your neighbors, for your church, for the kingdom, and for this world. We need to be walking, walking, living, breathing, phylactery factories. Amen? Amen and amen. If you do not know Jesus, whose name is the word of God, if you do not know the word, will you let us guide you to him, lead you to a relationship with him. He is a longing bridegroom looking for a bride. We're the bride. And he wants to live his life with you together jointly because he is painting this beautiful masterpiece, this picture of your life with his, one beautiful brushstroke at a time. God bless you, church. Thank you for watching today's program, One Brushstroke at a Time. If you have been blessed by this study, would you share your story with us? We want to hear how God is moving in hearts all around the globe. If you have a question, would like more information, or would like to request prayer, please visit our website at brushstrokeministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Brushstroke Ministries. You may also contact us at Brushstroke Ministries, P.O. Box 2353, Buchanan, West Virginia, 260. Join Jenny Fister every week at this time to hear a fresh revelation as she paints a beautiful picture of his word, one brush stroke at a time.